Hi all! So today I'll be looking at how you could use particles to trigger your bullet simulations. This isn't a bullet or particle tutorial, just a quick demo on getting you up and running on the technique and hopefully it'll open a few more possibilities. Firstly, let's start with our bottle. There it is, nothing very special, just hollowed out. We need to fracture this up. Now there's lots of tutorials out there which will show you how to do that. As an alternative technique worth considering, and if you have a copy of Third Power's Lightwave Brush Suite, there's a knife tool here. But before we activate that, let's quickly create a plane. Let's call it interior. And delete that, we just needed to create the surface. Okay, so now we've got the knife tool. And if we set it to solid and line, we could auto triangulate or not. And for surface, we'll select that interior that we've just created. Now if we just slice through this a few times, we've got a nice bespoke fracture. So if we now move the parts, you can see it's all nicely split up with a self-applied interior surface. So that's how that was done. Now this was originally modeled at real size. So it's just about just under 40 centimeters in this case. Now what I found is the bullet simulations like things big this was a little bit too small and I was getting a lot of jitters. So what I'd end up doing is use this one, which is 500% larger than the original. So it tops out about two meters. This is what the fracture looks like. I've on purposely kept it light to keep the sim time down. The only other object I'm gonna be using is a bullet. And that's all there is to that one. Here's our wine bottle and bullet. I'm going to turn the bullet off because we don't need to see that. Let's select the bottle. Let's go over to the items tab and we're going to go to clone, clone instance. So let's bring up the instance generator. I'm going to use this just to spread out a few bottles randomly. So let's see what we're doing first there. We'll try a rectangular array. Not that many. Let's just go for a line of five. Let's add a little bit of variation. And what this is most useful for is varying up the rotations. So, okay, there we can fiddle around with the placement. Perhaps it's the random seed we need to change. Okay, so that's fine for that. Let's close that down. We're gonna bake these out, so slightly counterintuitive. We need to select the bottle, the original bottle that's being instanced. Let's go to item, clone, Python bake instance. Okay, so that's baked that out. And then this original one, I'm just gonna remove or I could move it around somewhere else. So that's a handy way to get some randomness in there. Select all of these bottles. If you have Ryan Roy's set of tools, you could translate average, and again, you could move these about. Quite a unique set of tools, really. And press it again to bake. So that's the placement of the bottles sorted. Let's sort out the particles next. So we'll create a new null and call it emitter. And let's move it to that side. Let's move forward to 60 frames and we'll move it along. That's good enough for our starting point. Brief properties, over to the effects tab and we will add an emitter to that. Spit on the large side, let's take it down. Okay, over to the motions tab, Z velocity, let's put in 10. Let's reduce the amount here. 10 a second, perhaps we'll limit it to 20 particles. 15 is probably better, and we'll need to remember this for later. Over in the etc tab, parent motion will knock to zero. So the movement of this null isn't influencing the direction of the particle. And for variety, let's add a little bit of explosion and vibration. Cool, there we go. So from the top view, we can see that our particles are shooting straight through our bottles. And while we're here, let's shorten their lifetime a bit and make them a bit faster. Last step for the particles, let's jump over to the instance tab and add an instance generator. We will add that bullet object. Where are you? There you are. We'll turn that on so we can see it and the type we will select, particles. Great. They look a good size, but let's just knock it up anyway, just so we can be totally obvious about it. 
Okay, that's good for the particles. The particle and bullet systems are both totally separate and don't speak to each other. So we're gonna fudge our way around that using effects linker. What I'm first gonna do is remove this instance generator that we started earlier, because we don't need that any longer. So that will tidy the scene up a little. Let's create a new null and we'll call that impact. Big shouty caps and let's make it big shouty red. This next part is very straightforward. We will go over to the utility tab and somewhere under the additional drop down, you will find effects linker or you could just control spacebar and type in effects underscore. There it is. So then particles is that emitter that we created. We want to replace this object with the impact. So select that null if it isn't already. I'm going to leave all this as default. It's just a copy I'm going to tweak. Now I think we ended up with 15 particles in the end. So I'm actually going to type in 14 here as it will be this null plus an additional 14. And I'm just going to hit OK. Click through this to update. There's our 15 nulls all attached to particles. If we press M for motion options, we can see the particle effects linker modifier has been added and it's pointing to the relevant particle. Now, for whatever reason, if you make a mistake doing all of this, it's easy just to select all but one of those nulls, remove them from scene. It's also a good idea to remove this modifier from the motion options panel and just run it again. So that's basically our setup all sorted. Now we need to just finish it off with the bullet simulations. Before I do that though, a little bit of housekeeping, select all my impact nulls. Let's create a group. And I'm gonna group them all under a single null just to keep it nice and tidy. So then bullet. Now we have all of these nulls, our impact nulls, we can now use these as kinetic objects in the bullet system. Jump over to the effects tools tab and open up bullet. Okay, so there they are. We've selected all our impact nulls here. It's probably quicker to add objects using the menu on this side. So these will be our kinetic bodies. And what we're also gonna to do to save a whole world of pain is we're gonna to go to frame zero. There they all are. Okay, now they're a little on the large side, so let's take those down using the scale. The current shape is a box, and I'm gonna change that to a sphere. Okay there, let's now select all the bottles. Now these are gonna be parts. So I've clicked on parts, and here they are in here. Now for shape type, I'm gonna use convex pieces, just to help with calculations a little bit. And finally, what we need is a ground. So let's add a null, let's call it ground. So with our null selected, that will be our static body. So let's click on that and go into back view. There's a collision margin of five millimeters. So I'm just gonna take it below the bottles there. Now, obviously this ground isn't nearly big enough. We can either make it larger here. We wanna keep the Y on one meter. But I think also this stretching is relevant as well. So we could do it that way. Perhaps move it back. So one last tweak. Before I forget, let's reselect the bottles and for initial activation, we'll have them start sleeping. Okay, so let's uh, extend the timeline a little bit. 120 frames should do. Well, that simulated pretty quickly, which is a good sign. And that's basically the technique. As mentioned earlier, this isn't gonna be a bullet tutorial because that subject is massive and I'm no expert on it. But there should be enough there to have fun with the settings. Now you'll probably wanna change the values of the particles, but that's all set up, ready to go. Personally, I use effects browser to jump in and out of particle settings. So let's say for instance, we want to make the particles even quicker. Now Bullet won't see these changes by default, you've got to reset the dynamics. And you do that just by hitting this little reset button at the top of the panel here. So yeah, have fun with it. 
What I would say though is once you're happy with your particle and your bullet sim, bake them out so they don't change. Finally, a quick tip on texturing. All these are a one bottle object, yet I have multiple colors on the surface. So to show that, here's the surface editor. So it's just this one bottle and this one surface. So there's another classic from DB and W. So if I bring up the nodes, firstly, I've used the extended spot info and I've used the clone index for each of these bottles. And that's fed into another DB and W vector multi switcher as it's called. Here's the setting for that. And it's basically looping through each clone index and changing colors on each. Really simple, but really effective and great for workflow. Link to their Patreon site down below. And hopefully see you again soon.